So this is our first circuit diagram, which is a CMOS inverter. So where we see that NMOS right here and PMOS right here. And the operation of this circuit is such that when input A is at logic zero or one, output would be at logic one or zero. So just a complementary of the input. And the symbol for the inverter is like this. We show a small bubble. This PMOS acts as a pool up network. NMOS acts as a pool down network. And we know that when input is at logic zero, the NMOS will be switched off, PMOS will be switched on, and the output will be pulled up to the logic high, that is VDD. When the input is at logic one, NMOS is switched on and BMOS is switched off, and the output will be pulled down to logic zero, that is ground. And that is how it will perform the operation of CMOS inverter. On the other hand, if we cascade two inverters, one and two. So this circuit is called as CMOS buffer. So when the input is at logic zero or one, the output would also be at logic zero or one. So we'll have the inversion at the first stage and again inversion at the second stage. So the output will follow the input. The symbol for this circuit can be drawn like this. You have input A, and the output Y. Sometimes we show the extra input here, which is called as enable input. So when the enable is there, the circuit is active. When enable, let's say it is at logic zero, the circuit is not active. You have another diagram which is of CMOS NAND gates. So we see here two NMOS switches. They are constructed in series and they will perform the work of pull down network. Two PMOS right here, they will perform the job of pull up network. So this circuit will perform the logic of NAND. So when you have a particular combination of inputs accordingly, the output would be y equals a nand b. You can verify the operation of that. For instance, let's say you apply a combination of 0, 0, and the output can be 1. So let's say you have a equals to 0 and b equals to 0, and most switches are switched off, but the b most switches with a equal to 0 and b equal to 0 will be switched on, and the output will be pulled up to VDD and that's why we write here y equals to 1. Similarly, you can verify the operation of this circuit for all possible input combinations and you will see how the output will behave according to the inputs. On the other hand, you have another input, another circuit that will work as a NOR gate. So it is just that we use the NMOS switches in parallel and the PMOS switches right here in series. And the PMOS switches will work as a pull up network again. And this parallel combination of NMOS switches will work as a pull down network. So the circuit will perform the job of NOR logic. You can verify the operation by applying the possible combination of inputs. What if we want to construct a CMOS circuit for AND logic? So you can revise. This is a schematic or a circuit diagram for the CMOS NAND. And this is a circuit diagram for the CMOS inverter. So NAND followed by an inverter would give you the output of AND logic. So let's say you have input A and B, 
and we can see that the output would be A and B. So whenever we want to implement a circuit for the non-inverting function such as AND, what we do here, we take the NAND and we put inverter that will form the AND logic. Take a look at this circuit diagram. We want to make the circuit diagram for OR logic. Again, it is a non-inverting function. So you have the first stage of this circuit right over here. We can see that this is basically a NOR logic circuit diagram and it is followed by inverter right here. So NOR followed by inverter would give you the circuit diagram for the OR logic. So this is how we can create the circuit diagrams for inverting functions. Let's say this is our first exercise here where we are asked to sketch a transistor level schematic for CMOS two input XOR logic. So exclusive OR logic is to be drawn. And it is assumed that both true and complementary functions inputs are available. So in that situation, we know that A and B and Y can be written as A exclusive or a B. So let's say how we can implement this function using logic gates. So logic diagram for the XOR gate would be simply like this. We know that Y can be given as A or B or A, A bar and B or A and B bar. So this is the logic equation and here is the logic diagram. So you see we have both true and complementary inputs available that is A bar and A and we have B bar and B. So the output here would be A bar and B output here would be A and B bar and final output that is Y can be written as A bar B or A B bar. But now we are asked to draw the transistor level schematic for this. So have a look at this. So we have first AND gate here, we have second AND gate here and third gate is a OR gate. Now we already know in the previous slide how we can create the non-inverting functions using CMOS transistors. So let's have a look at this first diagram. So this complete diagram, this is NAND and this is inverter that makes AND logic. Here, right over here, another you have NAND and the inverter that will make another AND gate. So you have first AND gate, you have second AND gate and in the middle here, what you have here is the NOR followed by inverter's logic. So that will make OR logic. So look at the input combinations here. For the first case, you have A bar B, which are applied for the Second NAND gate inputs are A and B bar. They are both applied to PMOS switches as well as NMOS switches. And the output of these two NAND gates, let's say here the output is Y1, here the output is Y2. So here the output of first NAND gate, here is the output of second NAND gate, Y1 and Y2. And these two outputs of these NAND gates become the inputs of the OR gates right here. So you can see that Y1 and Y2 are applied to both NMOS and the PMOS switches. And the final output right here is Y that gives you a Boolean equation of exclusive OR function. We can verify the operation of this circuit by applying all possible combination of XOR logic. Let's have a look at another exercise where we are asked to, this is problem number two, where we are asked to draw the transistor level schematic for CMOS three input exclusive OR gate. So instead of two, 
in the as in the previous case we are now asked to draw the transistor circuit diagram for three input exclusive or logic here we also assume we have true and the complementary inputs they are available it means we have a and a bar it's complementary available so let's try to see how you can solve this so this is basically a two input xor logic so y would be a bar b or a b bar and what if we have this y as an input to this second logic diagram so we see that this y comes here and its complementary is applied to here and we see that with the another input which is c and its complementary c bar we can get the final output as z so here output would be y bar c and here the output will be y and c bar and the final output would be y bar c or y c bar and we know that y is nothing but the output of this first logic diagram so it is essentially a three input xor gate so let's say you have this two input xor gate that is y and with that you have let's say another input c with this final output would be c this is problem number three where we are asked to draw the transistor level schematic for the following logic here again we assume both true and complementary inputs are available so let's say you have logic equations four logic equations from y0 to y3 and they are given as a and b y1 is equal to a bar b y2 is equal to a b bar and y3 is equal to a bar and b bar so you have four output lines and two input lines so usually we can say that this is a realization of two is to four decoder logic so let's have a logic diagram for this so as you can see you have input a and input b and their complementary can be realized by the inverters placed here so you have a bar and b bar and accordingly y naught y1 y2 and y3 will be constructed so you see here we have a and b so y0 will be a and b and accordingly all logics can be created but what about its transistorized diagram so we see here we have four and gates one two three and four and we need two inverters one and two so already we know how to create a non-inverting circuit diagram for the non-inverting functions so here is that one so here are your logic equations here is your logic diagram and understand how we can generate the four possible outputs that is y0 through y3 so here is the first diagram circuit diagram that is generating the output line y0 so again this is basically and logic which is a combination of nand and the inverter followed by inverter will give you first and logic here is your y1 again this is a nand followed by inverter so that will give you another and gate same for the y2 nand followed by inverter will give you and logic and finally output y3 nand followed by inverter will give you y3 so this is how we can actually create this transistorized circuit diagram inverter circuits for a and b are not shown because we have assumed the true and complementary inputs are available to create this diagram 
that's all